multiplying the zeros? It's one third minus a seven. All right, what's seven twenty first minus three twenty first? Four twenty first? With the pot. There's the volume. Okay with this so far? Hey, just keep in mind, if they say revolve about the y-axis, what are we using? Revolution about the y-axis. We're going to use this one, true? We'll do this for revolve revolution about the x-axis. Should I write it? This is about x-axis. What would be the formula about the y-axis? For the washer method. I heard it. F Same thing, but just change this to what? Y. Function in terms of y. And function in terms of y. D y, right? Manual call. Hey, we don't have to solve it, but I was wondering if you could help me set this up. I'm going to keep that same shaded region at the beginning. Right there. This time, I mean, you know where I want this thing revolved around? I'm going to revolve this around the, the y-axis. That same region. Making a bunch of circles in here. What would be the setup? <coughs> Again, I don't want you to solve it, just set it up. This is dx or dy. Dy. This is the outer, this is the inner, right? Look carefully, with your eyes, which one is further away from the axis of revolution? The line or the curve? The curve. So I'm going to put this down. I've got the setup. I'm going to be done. Catch my error. Ready? Cool. The curve is further away. Got it. Woohoo! And I move on. I screwed up. What did I screw up? I got it right. The curve and the line, but everything's in terms of what? Y. Y. So y equals x. So x equals y. But how would you write this? If y equals x cubed. What is x equal? Cube root. Cube root of y. There you go. And then when that's that's y to the two-thirds power if you did really want to calculate this and do the actual, find the actual answer. Sometimes students are like, wouldn't it give you the same answer? Be careful. It may look like it'd give you the same. Sometimes it's slightly different. You know, we got 421 pi over the last one. 4 over 21 pi. This one might be slightly different. Oh, so when you do this, if it's about the y-axis, we always got to solve these expressions for the letter x. So that everything is in terms of the variable y. So if y equals x cubed, we'd have to solve for that x variable. Take the cube root of both sides, and you get x equal to the cube root of y. So great question. That's so we get everything in terms of that y. And then you'd be good to go. You'd find that exact line. So we're like, well, what are we going to do for the remainder of the class? We know how to handle washers or discs, right? By the way, you can always do the washer method. Ignore the disk method, except if it's a disk, wouldn't this just be zeros? You go top minus bottom. Remember the first one? And then you notice if you just want to think top minus bottom, I always do washer method. Remember my first problem? You're like, okay, you're the, you're the outer one, and the inner would just be this what? X-axis, right? I, some students like to think that way. They're like, I don't want to have too many formulas. So I'll just always do the washer method. Except if it was totally flush with that axis and you're revolving this way around the x-axis, you can think of that as just y equals zero, right? You'll still get the same answer. Okay, so for the remainder class, we're like, what do we got to focus on? We pretty much hit everything. There's only one thing left for us to do. What if this gets revolved around another line? Okay? So that's what we're going to talk about now. What if this stuff doesn't get revolved about the y-axis or gets revolved about the x-axis, but gets revolved about some of the line. 
So find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded, they always say bounded by, the region between y equals x, y equals x cubed, and which quadrant? Just in quadrant one, about the line y equals two. Okay, and again, we won't solve, we're going to at least set this up. Because we know with technology, with these cool PID384 calculators, we can let that be the definite integral, true? The setup's important to us here. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by, let's do it again, y equals x, y equals x cubed. Okay, where did these intersect at? One? Yeah. I'm curious, what's that y value? Is that one, two? Good. Well, we're going to roll this around, which line? Y equals two. So many units. This is the axis of revolution, isn't it? What's your line of revolution, isn't it? And make sure that's flat. We're going to revolve it around that. So, how will we do this? This involves transformation of functions. Do you all remember how to do transformation of functions? This isn't as bad as you think. This is our new axis of revolution. This is it. So what I want you to think about this. If this is my axis of revolution, this was y equal to what? x g. This was y equal to x. Could you tell me how you would think of those two functions if this really was the x-axis? This got shifted down two notches. Do you remember how to write that? What would be this curve? Y equals x cubed, but it got shifted down two notches. Outer. Minus a what? That's what the function would be. You agree? If it got shifted down two notches, pretend, I'm saying pretend this was the x-axis. Then what would we call this thing? X cubed minus two. What would we call that line? It was y equals x. What would that now be? X minus two. You agree? These would be the two expressions if you and I, you know, imagine that this was which the line y equals x, right? If this was y equal to x, this would be y equals x cubed minus 2. And what would this line be? y equals x minus 2, right? And where did they originally meet? At 0, 1. That's what we now know what to do. There's no trick behind us. Here's the answer to this problem. 0 to 1. Squared, squared, when it's still only in quadrant one, it's going around this way, so you all agree it's still dx? Just like the x-axis, so it's still going to be dx. Just be careful. Who's outer? Who's inner? Look at it carefully. Where's the axis of revolution? Here. Who is further away? X cubed. This thing, right? The x cubed. So I'll put that one here with the minus what? Two. And which one goes here? X minus two. There you go. And look carefully. What did I forget? Pi. Uh, All right. You're like, don't forget pi. Transformation of functions. This will solve the problem. Now, when you only have to set this up, a lot of times, even for a test, for testing scenarios, I have to say set up only. Because I know you could solve the definite integral. You would have to distribute that, right? Foil it out. Or use your calculator just to compute it. But there's the setup. Cool. Awesome. Uh, why is it, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little rusty. Why is it not y equals x plus 2? Because don't you want the two functions to move up? Because you want it to revolve around. I'm with you. I'm thinking that. The, way, the reason we're doing an x, it's a difference, is because we were thinking. Here's the image we want. We wanted this revolved around this, like you're saying. Like it would look like that. You, you want to move that upward too, right? Yeah, it's getting shifted around this. So what we have to, the way we got to think is let's pretend that was the x-axis. And then imagine what would these two functions be. That's how we got to think. And if this was the x-axis, both of these two functions got shifted down two notches. Now, if it helps, I can give you a, a little trick that helps. Do you notice in the end? 
What was this line right here? Y equal to what? Y equals three. Did you notice I just put that number here with a difference? Did you know you could think of that as like a shortcut formula? The only thing is, I want to make sure you tell me what to do. So I'm going to set up the problem like this. I'm going to give you one word. Still from 0 to 1, that's not switching. I was just wondering what you could do. I mean, you could think of this as a shortcut. Right? This will always be the math formula. But, what if we go around, is everyone ready? I'm going to switch this line. I'm going to put it down here. What if you go around like, Y equals negative 3. Then all we have to do is put instead of minus 2 is a what? A minus 3. But when I'm hearing this, what's a minus a negative 3 become? Plus 3. There's one other thing I want you to check before I write my answer. Who's further away from this axis of, symmetry, axis of revolution? Who's further away? Y equals X is further away. So I'll put that here. And then I'll put this one here. The only thing is, did you hear this? They said x cubed minus a negative 3 turns into what? Plus. And here's where a plus would be involved. And then this was what? Oops. Or if it helps for your notes, just write it like this. x cubed minus negative 3. x minus negative 3, because you can think of that form. OK, we got one more, one more problem to do. Like, wait, we've covered everything. Well, we're going to end class by revolving around a line like that. <laughs> Everyone okay? What if we revolve around one of these lines? Let's take that same ring. All right. Oh. Let's go around. Everyone, no tricks. Right here. Last problem. This time we're going around the line. X equals 2. Well, I think this is just going to be a shift to subtraction again, right? Does anybody know, by the way, see how that cube, you know what that would happen? If this was the y axis for this curve right here to do this, you know what that is? You know what it looks like? You know what that's what would do it? That's what shifts something to the left or right. You all agree? So that's how we got to think. I'm going to write this down. One of these curves is like a, this is the axis of revolution. That math formula will still apply. This is by transformation of functions, OK? Put my pi. Where do they originally meet? Let's do it. I'm going to have to do dy because it's getting revolved this way, right? So if it's getting revolved this way, we're thinking dy like before, just like the y-axis, OK? So let's get a dy in there. Cool. Who's further away? x equals y, so I'm going to get this here. Squared minus squared. You said the x is further, but i got to put it in terms of y. So this is a y. What was the shift? Minus what? Minus 2 will win it, just like before. Yeah, so this right here, this was y equal to x before. But because we're going around the line x equals 2 now, you're not going to think of this like, if you're my new axis of revolution, you're not going to think, what would this line be? Wouldn't this line be a line like y equal to like an x minus a 2, right? Something like that. But this will still mathematically work that we're doing this. The only thing is, what would this curve be if this was like the y-axis? That would be like a y equals x minus 2, right? What would this be if this was the y-axis? The other one would be a x minus 2 all what? 2? The only thing is, I know I'm going to put this here. I just got to figure that out. Can you all help me figure out this expression? Because it's not just one. I'll put it, then I'm going to put a sad face. Oh, I'm so close, right? You all know this one was further away from this. But what letter do I got to solve for? Yeah, so let's fix it. If y equals x cubed, 
What's x equal to? There it is. Got it. I'll put it in yellow job. Remember, setup only, so let's just. If you're curious for my test, problems like this, like me, I like to do personally, just set up only. So I need these numbers. What were they? These don't change. These are the original points where they intersected, which was what? Zero, zero and one. But are you okay that I did the minus two, minus two on it? No, which each one? I'm just saying why is the x being the outside? Oh, with this? Yeah, and I want to show you something. So if I had to solve for this x, I'd cube root both sides, wouldn't I? I want you to see why. You cube root both sides of the equation. Like that? I got it. Oh, he sees it. Very good. And then you get this, and look what happens. Very good. Hey, uh, so hey, can we talk about a formula here too? Before we leave? Because I mean, it's getting a little weird when you shift. And then I'll go to you. I'm gonna get, we're going to get a formula going. What if it's around a line like this? And that line is to the right of this, these two expressions. We could just put the what? The line down here minus that number, square both, but this has to be the what? The outer one, which means it has to be what? Furthest away from the axis of revolution, and this one just has to be what? Closer, true? Now, help me out with this. What if the line is over here, like negative 3? What happens to the math? Minus a negative 3 turns into a? No, that's plus. Cool. Oh, go ahead. Why did you square two to the y? Oh, yeah, you're awesome. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, you're the best. Thank you for catching that. That was on video, too. Thank you. <laughs> so when he says, I want to do the cube root of that minus two, and then this is all one. Great. Thank you for catching up with your eye. That was a bad error on my part. I give him, like, bonus point for that. Anybody else see that? You're probably going to be, what is he doing? I have no business squaring it, right? Hey, so is that what I pay with this? If he still stays zero to one, I like to set up on that only. Cool. Hey, I hope the temperature is comfortable enough. No, that's it. Great job. If you have any questions, stick around and ask me. Uh, on this, would you be fine?